The internet is something we take for granted, and yet very few of us realize how vital it has become to human existence. Best iPhone that we have ever created. It's summertime, and there's never been a better time to join America Online. I planned all my vacations on AOL. And now there's a new form of cyber matchmaking, college networking websites. Is this perhaps the next big thing? Every day from the moment you wake up to the moment you fall asleep, you send and receive billions of bytes of data around the world through a very sophisticated telecommunications and networking infrastructure. Every time you send a WhatsApp message or an iMessage to your friends in another country, stream your favorite show on Netflix or self-indulge in Amazon, you're sending a massive amount of ones and zeros through the internet. Multiply that by the 45 billion devices connected nowadays and you get an idea of the massive scale of information that we generate any given day. Hello everyone, my name is Antonio and in this channel we talk about the latest trends of business and technology. If you like that type of content, please consider subscribing. So let's start at the beginning. In the 1960s, during the Cold War, when Russia launched Sputnik, the United States Department of Defense was looking for ways to communicate information even after a nuclear strike. This eventually led to the creation of ARPANET, which is known as the Advanced Research Projects Agency Network, the predecessor of what we know today as the internet. But at that time, it was only open to scientists, researchers, and librarians. In the 1970s, certain protocols were invented to standardize the way that information was sent and received over the web. This helped introduce email, which was a revolutionary step in how we communicated with each other using computers. After a few years in the 1980s, the National Science Foundation funded the creation of NSFNet, or National Science Foundation Network. This was a network of supercomputers connected throughout the continental United States. And finally, in the 1990s, with the commercialization of the internet, coupled with the invention of Wi-Fi and Windows, this created a dramatic shift in the technology sector, which takes us to the 21st century. So how does it work really? First off, let's grab an example so that we're all on the same page. Everybody's used to sending a text message with a photo to a friend, right? So how does that photo get to that other person's phone? Well, nowadays, most messages are sent via the internet. Think about WhatsApp, iMessage, even Telegram. But let's break it down. Let's start with the first layer of the internet or what is known as the last mile or first mile if you're the user. This is where our apps, phones, Wi-Fi, routers and cell towers coexist with one another. This is where everything starts once you send that text message. So the first thing that happens after you send that photo and you click send is that your phone will break it down into smaller pieces into what is known as packets. These packets have information such as who is it coming from, who is it going to, and the actual content of the message. The phone then translates these packets into ones and zeros or binary code and then gets them onto radio waves using its antenna. So yes, your phone is a radio. Now these radio waves get picked up by a router which typically sits in your house or your office. If you had a connected router before, you will remember that it has a few cables on the back. All those cables connections end up in a place that we know as the internet hub which is the next layer of the internet. The internet hub is a place where all internet service providers such as AT&T or Orange in France have their networks and multiple wire pathways which they use to communicate and exchange information. Now, let's say that you were sending your photo to someone who lives in the same city as you. What will typically happen is that your router will convert those radio waves into pulses of laser light if you have optical fiber internet or electricity if you have an ethernet cable made out of copper. Then, based on the information of the packet, the internet service provider will determine what is the most efficient route for that message to get to the hub. And once in the hub, all those ones and zeros in the form of laser light or electricity will eventually go from my internet service provider to my friends, and that's how he or she eventually gets your photo. But what if you wanted to send that same photo to someone across the world? Then you would be tapping into the third layer of the internet known as the backbone. This is the backbone a physically connected world by optical fiber. All of these cables are under the sea and made of glass as thin as a hair, but they are covered by stronger materials like carbon, silicone, or acrylate to avoid damage, such as a bite from a shark. So what happens in this case? Well, nothing that much different from what I explained before. Your ones and zeros in the form of lasers travel through these optical fiber cables under the ocean, which connect most places on Earth, and they travel almost as fast as the speed of light. But what's coming next? So this is the future of the internet. There are many new technologies, as you know, being developed that will eventually lead us to a more connected world. The quantum internet, Web3, 
virtual reality, augmented reality. All of these are very exciting spaces. But even though these technologies are evolving at an exponential pace since the early days of the internet, we still have a long way to go to provide basic connectivity to everybody around the world. If you look at this chart, it's clear to see that we have a long road ahead. As of today, most of the internet access, particularly the one that is fast broadband, is mostly accessible to wealthy countries because it requires big infrastructure investments. So alternative solutions are being explored to provide basic internet services to those communities that need it the most. Amazing ventures are currently underway, such as taking advantage of unutilized TV white space to provide broadband connectivity to rural communities, an effort that Microsoft was leading. And even though it failed, Google's Loon project was trying to provide internet access by using balloons that would fly over rural communities. We're still a long way to go, but imagine the power of having almost 8 billion people connected to the internet. The number of businesses and technological innovation would take quantum leaps. Exciting future ahead of us for sure. If you like that video, please smash that like button, consider subscribing to the channel, and I will see you in the next video. Ciao.